welcome students to another video lecture with Mr. Knett here. We're continuing our lessons on geometric principles. We're moving on to a new chapter here. Uh, in our first lesson here, we're going to discuss about angle and line relationships. And I can't stress enough that we're about to learn a decent amount of vocabulary. And the key to these problems is knowing how to use the vocabulary to set up the equation to solve the problem. So if we don't know the vocab, you're going to struggle a lot in this lesson. So try to use any strategies you have to learn these vocab words. And sometimes a good strategy is just that flashcard strategy. So go ahead and pause here and copy down what you see. OK, welcome back. So we're learning about vertical adjacent complementary and supplementary angles. And we're, we're trying to determine measurements of angles by using their relationships. So the first thing I have here is this is two notations you're going to see possibly throughout this lesson. Um, the first one uh, right here is said angle four. So this symbol right here stands for angle. Um, so that said angle four. If there's a little M in front, the M stands for measurement. So the way we say this is the measurement of angle four. You're going to hear me repeat this over this lesson and future lessons. So if you're struggling at all, make sure to come back and double check which phrasing I'm using. Just moving on to the next slide here. Um, I'm going to scroll down just a little bit. I think you can see enough. The heading is going to be pairs of ankles. And then, uh, yep, that'll be just enough. So please make sure to draw this picture large enough to see it. Uh, we're going to use this example here as our generic example on types of relationships. Uh, so it's important that it's clear. So go ahead and please make sure we're going to have room to write in this symbols column here because I have some, uh, we have to list our vertical angles and adjacent angles and so forth in this column. So go ahead and pause and copy down what you see. Okay, welcome back. All right, so the first concept we're trying to learn about is what is a vertical angle? So now, a lot of the time when we hear vertical, we think straight on top of each other. But we also have to realize that these shapes that we draw can rotate. So it's not always going to be the top to the bottom. It could also be angles that are actually across from each other. And we can normally use some logic here. When we talk about vertical angles, they have to be the same measurement, which means they're going to look like or closely that they are the same size. Of course, as long as I'm not the one drawing them, we know uh, my drawing abilities. So looking up at our picture up above, which angles do you think are vertical angles? Which two do you think are vertical angles to start? Yeah, you're right. The, the first two vertical angles here are angle two. And angle two is congruent. We're going to learn a symbol. Uh, this symbol means congruent. And it means they have the same measurement. I don't know what is happening with my marker. So that means congruent. And I can spell that better in class tomorrow. And angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. Those two angles are vertical angles to each other. And notice, I, I used the first two to make it easier. They're right on top of each other. And you should also visually notice that angle 2 and angle 4 are both obtuse angles, meaning they may have the same measurement. And based on what we're learning now, we now know they do actually have the same measurement. What other two angles are also vertical angles to each other in the picture above? Yeah, you're right. It's angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. So those are our two different relationships of vertical angles. Angle 2 is the same as angle 4, and angle 1 is the same as angle 3. Those are vertical angles. And again, when we look at angle 1 and angle 3, you should visually be able to notice those are both acute angles. And since they're both acute angles, we're actually learning today that when they're drawn this way, they are exactly the same measurement. Okay, adjacent angles. All adjacent angles means is angles that are next to each other. So please don't use the congruence symbol when I draw these things. Can you tell me two angles that are adjacent to angle one? So again, adjacent just means next to each other. So I'm going to use an arrow because there's no equation we can create from this. Uh, what are some angles that are adjacent to angle one? 
Yeah, you're right. It could be angle two is adjacent. And also, angle four is adjacent to angle one. There are a lot of other relationships I could list here. This is just one example. So angle four, for example, let's just verbally do angle four. There are two angles adjacent to angle four. Can you find them? Yeah, you're correct if you said angle one is adjacent to angle four, and the other angle adjacent is angle three. So again, we could have a long list in there, but we're just trying to uh, have two angles from our visual that do are adjacent to each other. Okay, complementary angles. For complementary angles, we are not able to use the image I drew above because there are no what degree angles up there. Yeah, complementary angles are only formed if there are 90 degree angles. So it's not going to work in this current picture I've drawn because none of those angles are right angles. Uh, I will have an example later on in this note for the 90 degree angle, which we'll solve together in class. Supplementary angles do appear up above, and it's any two angles that would sum to 180 degrees. And if you have forgotten, uh, 180 degrees is a straight line. So you're looking for any two angles that if you added them together would add up to 180 degrees. So for example, two angles that would add up to 180 degrees in our, our image above would be angle one and angle two. I'm going to give the example of angle four and angle three because those are the same. So if we added angle four plus angle three together, we would end up with 180 degrees. Can you find any other supplementary combinations up there? Yeah, another one would be angle two and angle three added together is a straight line. Angle one and angle two added together is a straight line. And angle one and angle four added together is another representation of supplementary angles. Okay, so that was our first four vocabularies, and they deal with only two lines being crossed. The next thing we're moving into are called transversals. And transversals are created when two parallel lines are intersected by another line. And for the sake of this lesson, whenever you see two lines being intersected by a third line, and the two lines look parallel, assume they are parallel, even if my drawing has not accurately drawn them exactly straight next to each other. Um, so transversals are parallel lines intersected by another line. And I'm going to get to the next slide before I ask you to pause and copy down what you see. I'm going to scroll down a little bit more so you can see the bottom of this table. Okay, so go ahead and pause here and copy what you see for transversals. Okay, welcome back. So our next three vocabulary words we're learning here are alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, and corresponding angles. And I think you may notice a pattern. All three of these types of angles have the same what? Yeah, you're right. They all have the same measurements. So when you're comparing alternate interior angles, they will always have the same measurement. Alternate exterior angles also always have the same measurement. I'm going to list just one example currently, but we're going to need space to add other examples too. So alternate interior angles, we're looking for opposite sides of the transversal and inside the parallel lines. So we have four angles inside the parallel lines. We have angle four, we have angle three, angle five, and angle six. Those are the interior angles. I love when mathematicians are really literal. What angle is the alternate interior angle to angle four? When students have trouble with this, I remind them of the fact that alternate interior angles need to be the same side. So when size, so when we're looking at angle four, angle three, angle five, and angle six, there are only two angles together that look like an angle, and there are two other angles that look alike. So angle four is obtuse. What other alternate interior angle is also obtuse? Yeah, angle six. So angle four is congruent to angle six. 
Oh, my smart board is having some issues. There we go. Those are alternate interior angles. And visually, we can tell they're the same because they have, they're both obtuse. The other alternate interior angles, what angle is alternate interior to angle 3? Yeah, you're right, it's angle 5. So those are the alternate interior angles. And visually, we would know they are alternate interior angles because angle 3 and angle 5 are both up, are, are acute angles. All right, so now the next part. We're talking about alternate exterior angles. Well, exterior, we only have angle 1, angle 2, angle 8, and angle 7. Those are the only ones on the exterior of our parallel lines. And it's really similar to alternate interior. They have to have the same size. So what angle is the alternate exterior angle to angle 1? Yeah! It's out on the other side. It's alternating. It's angle 7. They're both the acute angles there. What angle is alternate interior to angle 2? Yeah, you're right. It's angle 8. Nicely done. Lastly, our corresponding angles. Corresponding angles, again, are the same exact size to each other. But other than going exterior interior of our parallel lines, now we're thinking about if we looked at just this location, the upper left angle on this location is angle 1. Now, look on the other transversal. Which angle is in the same exact location as angle 1, but on the other part of the transverse? Yeah, it's angle 5. So, corresponding angles are angle 1 is the same as angle 5. Which angles are the same as angle 2? Which one is the corresponding angle to angle 2? Notice it's in the upper right here. So we're looking in the upper right in the other part. Yeah, you're right, it's angle 6. Okay, what angle is corresponding to angle 4? Yeah, you're right, it's angle 8. And what angle corresponds to angle 3? Yeah, you're right, it's angle 7. Great job getting through all this vocabulary today. That's the hard part of these lessons. Now, we're going to start using these relationships to each other to create equations we can solve. I'm going to start showing you the couple first examples, and now I've noticed that my note is getting a little long. So we're going to copy down the next two examples, and you're going to want to leave some space. Can't stress that enough. You're going to need some space on these problems. So if you don't leave any space, I'm going to make you erase these problems and redraw them. So try not to have to do it twice. Do it correctly the first time. So please copy these two problems down, and we're going to begin going over these in class after our Chapter 12 test next week. Um, and that's when we'll actually evaluate these problems. But again, we'll evaluate them using these relationships that we just learned. It's all about being able to set up equations based off their relationships. So thank you again for another video lecture with Mr. Kinnett. If you have any questions, please write them down. I will definitely answer them in class. I can't wait to see you soon.